Today we're going to be looking at Metaball Studios, specifically a comparison of the most destructive explosions. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. Just like that. Okay, so they're going to start off small just for scale, it looks like. Yeah, small even by 4th of July standards. I'm glad they showed the lack of fireballs, because really it's designed to kill with shrapnel. Not like you see in the movies. Guess we're going to do a gradual build up to the nukes. One of my co-workers in his office had a claymore as his background for his phone and he was a marine and he had it that when you'd open it you'd see the front toward enemy part <laughs> he had an interesting sense of humor Okay, so yeah, we're getting at just a few kilograms of TNT. Nuclear weapons, the smallest nuke and launcher was this monstrosity, the W-54 Davy Crockett, but it was still between 10 and 20 tons of TNT. It was taken out of service for obvious reasons. But yeah, this Hellfire missile is a classic. I like they're showing the effect from the building, the uh, shrapnel, because you see in all these movies, they go to the window, check out the explosion, and are somehow fine in some cases. But yeah, now we're starting to get to the point where you don't want to be anywhere near this thing. That is to say, not even the next building over. That's a bomber. Oh, an earthquake bomb. So it's designed, rather than exploding when it hits the ground or near when it hits the ground, to actually go a bit underground and cause, well, earthquakes, shockwaves. Interesting. That's heavy for back then, 2400 kilogram explosive. Whoa. So yeah, they did it on purpose where they wanted to show it go in at more of a tall angle so it gains more, gains a higher terminal velocity so it goes deeper into the ground. Nice detail. So it seemed like it exploded kind of soon. This should leave a pretty big crater. I guess showing the effects of the shock waves on the building next door. Yeah. Alright, this is a big thermobaric weapon, so 
Kind of the opposite, really. Rather than go in the ground, this is designed to air burst. It disperses an explosive gas or liquid and then ignites. I've also heard these referred to as fuel air bombs, and it emits a massive shockwave. But the shockwave's in the air rather than the ground. So the effects are interesting. When they changed the bomber, they had a Lancaster, and now they have a TU-160, by the looks of it. I'm not an expert on planes, so tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, like that, that pressure wave. Yep. Windows shattered everywhere. This is a really good comparison channel. I really appreciate the recommendations on it. They got some really cool effects. The Beirut explosion. I remember getting a bunch of texts asking if this was a nuke, and it's like, no, it's the same ammonium nitrate that you use in fertilizer. This is just happens when you happen to ignite about 3,000 tons of it, which I want to say it figured out to over a kiloton of TNT equivalent, so it gives you a sense of how volatile that is relative to TNT. That was close, 2750, there you go. Yeah. What a tragedy. And the reason why a lot of people asked me that question was because it produced a mushroom cloud, where it's not a nuclear thing at all, unlike video games like Fallout that produce teeny tiny mushroom clouds. Yeah, that's not how buoyancy works, guys. But it is silly. Fallout universe. Okay, now we get to the nuclear weapons. including the delivery method that's used. That's, you know, it was delivered by a B-29. Okay, good. They should show it as an airburst, because it was an airburst. Unlike a lot of the portrayals that exploded going off at ground zero for some reason. did it over modern Tokyo. Let's see. That is very well done, how they... Because you very rarely see the part where it explodes up and pushes down. That's what makes it so destructive, and that's why you got up with air burst versus ground attack. Now, you would have it explode closer to the ground if you're trying to destroy a fortified bunker, but here you're attacking a city, buildings, infrastructure, softer targets, that's going to maximize the damage. And it's so fast. All what happened was conventional explosive moved a cylinder, containing one portion of the critical mass to another portion of the critical mass. Very simple device. And a few things a lot of people don't know. One, it was less than 2% efficient compared to the bit of the core that actually fissioned. And mainly because you're dealing with a cylinder with a circular contact area, a very two-dimensional approach, so you're not maximizing your fissions. Fat Man, because it involved a spherical implosion, got its at a way more efficient use of its critical masses, about 17%. Over 20% if you count the natural uranium-238 tamper. And it was, but even still, it was the explosion that was the most deadly. Out of 100,000 killing 70,000, 80,000 people, 
very quickly from the fireball and the blast and shockwave. Though thousands more died afterward due to the effects of burns, shrapnel. Some of the things people died of would be highly treatable. The problem is you destroyed such a big area and no one's going to get medical care in there in time. And of course there's radiation poisoning. Didn't kill as many people as a lot of people think, but it was over 5,000 at the low end. And I'm talking about the immediate, and I'm talking about the effects of immediate acute radiation poisoning. I'm not counting. That's not including the people that would have, that would go on to develop cancer within the next five, ten years of exposure. Quite a horrific weapon. And all nuclear weapons, the nuclear part of the reaction is super fast compared to the explosive part that got the critical mass together. All the fissions were completed in a few shakes. A shake is 10 nanoseconds. If you happen to be at in a position where you can see this, by the time the light can travel from ground zero to your eyeball, the nuclear reaction is ancient history. Interesting they showed someone from outside the blast, the immediate effects. If that person wants to have the greatest chance of survival, they would stay indoors, get to a spot with no windows for 72 hours to allow the immediate fission products to decay away. A lot of them will have decayed away by then. Though, it's entirely possible they'll be fine based on which ways the wind's blowing, especially with an air burst. The effects of fallout are relatively minimal minimal compared to a ground burst but still 72 hours keep away from windows if you're dirty take a shower immediately in case you got some of the radioactive dust on you but main thing is stay inside oh the w78 warhead minuteman 3 referring to the missile So this weapon is pre-2005 because they were limited to one, but historically they did have multiple nuclear warheads. And these were medium-sized, 300 to 350 kilotons, to tell you how big things were in the 1970s when those are considered medium-sized. Then like Little Boy, this was a fusion weapon, specifically deuterium-tritium. And when I say a fusion weapon, I mean it starts with fission to create conditions hot enough for the, for the deuterium tritium, but that adds a lot to the destructive power. Okay, 350, that checks out. they're showing them in roughly the same location also u.s using a weapon against london interesting choice so as far as estimated fatalities from the blast that depends just as much as population density like everything else obviously if you target cities it's going to be way higher than targeting out in the country the denser the city sure it's possible for something the size of Little Boy to kill over a million people if you it's in that densely packed of an area. So I think they're showing if it impacted London and I'm guessing the outskirts of London. They don't necessarily have to be that close for a uh, multiple warhead weapon that separates in the upper atmosphere. But I'd take that with a pretty good sized grain of salt. Oh, here it is. The Sarabama, the infamous one that a lot of people bring up as the nuclear weapon that can destroy continents or even the entire world. Well, one was tested and it certainly didn't destroy the Earth. This one's a lot less practical because, compared to say the Minuteman and other MERV-based ICBMs that are very hard to intercept, this one's a piece of cake, even back in 1961, because it wouldn't even fit in the TU-95's bomb bay doors. So this is gonna be a very obvious radar signature that would be quite easy to intercept, even back then. 
So this was clearly an impractical weapon, and look, the people that designed it knew that. They just wanted to make a really big bomb that was a propaganda weapon that had zero intent of being deployed in surface. Plus, you're concentrating all your destructive firepower to one area. It would be a whole lot more efficient to spread it out on multiple locations. Rather than making a 50 megaton bomb, you could make 51 megaton bombs or 100, 500 kiloton bombs. It's ridiculous. And it would be quite easily shot down. And no, the bomb would not explode in, it would not ignite in a nuclear fireball the way it would if you shot it down, like you see in video games. It would have to be armed, then ignited. I bet this animation's gonna be cool, though. So the one that was tested was 50 megatons. There was one design that was 100 megatons, and keep in mind, only one such weapon was actually designed and detonated, because again, even the Soviets realized that it was an impractical weapon. One of the reasons why it was 50 megatons is because 100 megatons would be too big that the pilots couldn't make it to a safe distance. That's another reason why it had a parachute off. I mean, look at it. It's, a, <laughs> it's not exactly a smart bomb. Of course. I'm so sorry to anyone living in New York. Their city becomes a favorite target for disasters, and I'm just as guilty. On one of my other videos, I think I showed one on... New York City, so <laughs> just always seems to be that way. Realistically, though, this thing would have a very hard time making it to New York City. There's so many ways for it to get intercepted. Yeah, four kilometers in order to maximize damage to the surface. like a second sun. This is beautifully done. Now this one, so this bad boy had three stages. Well, arguably four, but three nuclear stages. So not counting the conventional explosive that starts the fission reaction. So the first stage being the fission bomb is to induce nuclear fusion by making conditions hot enough. And it's highly enriched uranium like 235 or plutonium 239 can achieve those sort of conditions. And secondary fusion stage consists of lithium deuteride, which is a compound of lithium and heavy hydrogen, the same heavy hydrogen you see in heavy water. And that's just to maximize its yield. So Sarbama had another layer of fusion or thermonuclear material, which is interesting. It's much more of a percentage of energy just from fusion compared to fission. So didn't really have that much fallout because there's not a whole lot of fission products for a weapon of that size anyway. And it was detonated at, an alt at a much higher altitude. And yeah, if you keep making your bomb disgustingly big, you could conceivably make your bomb bigger, upwards of 100 megatons, though this thing was already pretty disgusting at 50 megatons in terms of trying to transport this thing. Look at that. That is an immense shockwave, and the plane in real life did feel this shockwave. It didn't crash, but the shockwave was certainly noted as it immediately changed course to get out of... <laughs> as it immediately banked and turned away from what would be the explosion. So it's powerful, but this simulation is doing a pretty good job. It's showing it destroy greater New York, but it's certainly not taking out all or half or even a significant percentage of North America, like a, some of these conspiracy theorists believe. This was probably one of the best size comparison videos that was recommended to me. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.